Hey, what's up everyone? Vegetarian Zombie here, and I want to welcome you to my new series. That is Beginning C Sharp for Unity Developers. This series is aimed at getting you up and running with C Sharp. And at the end of this, hopefully, if you've gone through all of this and done and typed worked along with me and basically studied this material, you should be fluent with C Sharp. That's not to say that this course is any way going to be easy, especially if you have no programming experience whatsoever. Rather, we're going to take things one step at a time. We're going to break things down, study what they actually mean, and ultimately learn how it applies to Unity. If you're coming here and you're looking to see to learn C Sharp in a general sense, so for instance, working with Microsoft platforms, this is definitely not the course for you. This is C Sharp in relation to Unity. We're going to be building our scripts and we're going to be playing with them inside of Unity, seeing how scripts work and how Unity works with C Sharp scripts. The idea of this course is to teach you from the ground up everything you need to know to be proficient with this. So I'm, I'm assuming you have no program experience whatsoever. Oftentimes people, when they approach Unity, get very excited at the prospect of creating a new game. But once you get over that hump of learning Unity, you, quick, you quickly run into the wall of programming languages. So if you fit in that category, if you're a person who picked up Unity and you want to start making games, but you don't have the skills yet to actually code them, then you're in the right place. If you're coming to this course with, say, some programming experience and you're looking to learn C Sharp, this is probably not going to be for you just because I'm going to be approaching everything at a very beginner level. We're going to break down everything into their very barest parts. And if you already have programming experience, you're going to be bored to tears. So you should look at another resource that will help you out in, in, in a way that talks to your skill sets. Also, if you're looking to learn C Sharp in, ter in a terms of a general sense, such as working in Microsoft's ecosystem, then this definitely isn't for you. This is just learning C Sharp in context of Unity. Okay, so we have some goals we're setting for this. One, we're going to try and make you fluent in this course. But two, the reason I'm actually doing this YouTube series is to strengthen my C Sharp skills. So as I go about teaching you some of the various concepts. Please do me a favor. If there's something that can be illuminated or something I'm getting wrong or and so forth, please let me know in the comments. It will not only help myself improve as a better C Sharp developer, but it will also help everyone else who's following along. So here's how I'm approaching this. I'm going to be coming out with an episode fairly regularly, and I'll be walking through the concepts. I want you to follow along with me. Have this open in a monitor open up Unity, and do the things I'm doing. At the very end, I'm just going to give you a very small problem for you to do. It's just going to be based on what I covered. And then once you, go, once you go through that problem, you should have a better understanding of that. But it doesn't end there. What you should do as you're learning this stuff, you should be reading on other places. And I'll try to give you some sources on where you can improve or where you can look up some other information. But what would also help everyone else is for you to pass on any information. Please leave some comments about any things that you may find. If other people have problems, it would be a great help if you tried to answer them. And it doesn't just have to be here on YouTube, but also in other places as well, such as Stack Overflow. The way we learn things is by three ways. One is we learn through study, which is what you're doing here. Next, we learn by doing, which you should be doing at the very end of every episode. And then we also learn by teaching. By iterating on all these three concepts, you can become better and better developers so that at the end of this, you will be completely fluent, as I mentioned previously, in C Sharp, or at least have enough knowledge to make the games that you want to make. When you complete watching an episode, I highly suggest that you don't move on to the next one. Rather, go and do something fun. Play a video game, hang out with some friends, uh, read a book, and so forth. This allows your brain to process everything that you've just learned. And by doing this, you'll get a deeper understanding of what was just covered, or at least you'll remember more of, of what that content was. 
If you just go from episode to episode to episode, you'll be cramming everything in and you won't necessarily process everything that's being covered. You can simply do that and then go through the, the video series again and keep on doing this again and again and again, but it's better suited you just make some time for yourself. Enjoy, enjoy the good things in life and allow your brain to figure out what it's just learned. One good relaxing place is my own channel. Not only do I do tutorials, but I also do Let's Play survival games. Typically, I cover zombie apocalypses, but I cover other games as well. Hopefully, you'll have a good time watching them as I do making them. Finally, before we begin, a little information about myself. My name, of course, is Vegetarian Zombie, but my friends call me Brian, or formerly they call me Brian Moakley. I currently work at RayWinderlich.com. It's a site that produces high-quality tutorials on a variety of different subjects. I'm the Unity team lead over there, and my job is to facilitate the production of high-quality Unity tutorials and video tutorials. When not working things on Unity, I also produce Let's Play videos, as you can tell by this channel. I, I'm also a writer. I've had several of my short stories published, and I like to generally hang out and have good times. So that's enough about me. Let's dive in. I've created a new project, and I'm calling it C Sharp for Beginners. If you don't know how to create a new project in Unity, then what I suggest is you look at some beginner's intro to Unity's to get you up and running. I'm not going to be covering any of the parts of Unity, such as how to use Unity, how to work with Unity. There's tons of resources out there that will teach you that. This is just for you to learn C Sharp with Unity. Let's get started. The first thing that we do with any sort of programming language is to do a simple hello world. If you're not familiar with programming, it's just a way of writing some text that you can see it in a console. A console is where we output log messages. A log me message can be anything, such as hello world, or hi mom, or anything like that. Unity includes its own console, and if you go up to the window here, and you go down to console, you'll see a console like so. This is where all the messages that you write or all the messages that your scripts generated will be printing out. I'm just going to take this tab. I'm going to move it right next to my scene just so I can have it open. It's nice to have this clear on play selected. That way when you run your game, it's going to, it's going to erase all your other console messages. That way you can stay focused on what's actually being printed in this session. The first thing I'm going to do is get myself organized. Here in my project browser, I have the main scene. And this is something I created before I started recording. If you want to create a main scene, you can just hit File, and then you can do Save Scene. I'm going to create two folders in my project browser. One is going to be called Scenes, and the other is going to be called Scripts. As you can see, it put my scripts inside my scenes, and I can just take this folder and drag it out to the assets, like so. And I'm just going to drag my main into my scenes folder. This way we, we start organized and will be organized throughout the duration of this course. If you played around with Unity enough, you should have an idea of what a script is. A script is like any other component. You can attach it to game objects, and then the script runs at certain points. And we'll be covering all the, all the areas when the script actually runs. I'm going to go over to my scene view here. And as you can see, there's really nothing in it. We have a light and a camera. I'm going to select Game Object, 3D Object, and Cube, like so. And here's our cube. You can see we have our mesh filter, a box collider, and our renderer. What we want to do is attach a script that will just print out a simple message to us. There are many ways we can do this. We can select and we can select the scripts folder, type create and C sharp script. We can select the cube and then we can do add component and then new script. We'll just do it in the very general sense for now. I'm going to select scripts. From here, I'm going to choose new C sharp script and we'll call this hello world like so. Here you can see the inspector prints out our script for us, so we don't necessarily even need to open up our editor. 
Now, if some of you are interested to know what layout I'm using, I tend to use this, if I click on here, I tend to use 2 by 3. I really like this layout, but I don't like how it automatically gives me these large folders. So I come down here in my project browser and I just squish them up so I can see a listing of it instead. Once we have our script, we now want to attach it to our cube. We can do this by simply dragging it over here and adding it to the cube like so. Now when I select the cube, you can see we have our Hello World script attached. If I want to remove it, I just click this gear and choose Remove Component. Then if I want to add it again, I can simply do Add Component, click Scripts here, and click Hello World. And the same thing, it's reattached. Now let's edit our script. I'm going to double click in here, or I can double click in the project browser as well. This was from a file I recently had open, so I'm just going to close that. Okay, welcome to Unity Scripting, and we are in C Sharp. We're going to be going over all, all this stuff. So here you see this using, the stuff right here. Don't worry about this. Same, same with this, public class hello world colon mono behavior. Does that make any sense whatsoever? Well, you'll be happy to know it will soon. But for now, just ignore it. Same with the start and update. In fact, let's get the start and update out of here. We only want to focus on what's important. When you create a new script in Unity, that script can react to certain kinds of events. And there are a ton of events out there. But don't worry about those for now. You'll be learning about them throughout the course. For now, we're just trying to write a message. And we're going to write a message to the console during one of those events. And we're going to use the disabled event, meaning the object is created and then some point in time, either in code or maybe the user clicked a checkbox, that game object has been disabled. We're using the on disable event so that you can manually trigger your code. Simply put, you write your code in, in mono develop, and then when you switch back to Unity and run your game, all you need to do is simply uncheck a checkbox to see the results of that code. This makes it really easy to set things up and to run the code when you're ready to see it run. There are other ways to do this, but by far this is the easiest. Okay, do you have Unity open? Do you have the script open? Great. Follow along and type exactly what I'm typing. The first thing I'm going to do is type void, just like that. Then I'm going to type on disable. And then open parentheses, close parentheses. Then I'm going to hold down shift and just put the brace. The brace is above the quotation mark. Then I'm going to put a couple carriage returns and put a close brace, and that's right next to the open brace. Now in the middle, I'm going to type my code. Are you ready? We're going to type debug, just like that. And then we're going to put period, then capital L-O-G. So that's debug period log. Then we're going to put an open parentheses, and then our quotation marks. From there, we're going to type in hello world, just like that. And I'll put an exclamation mark at the end. Then we'll put our close quotation mark, a close parentheses, and then a semicolon. Congratulations, you just wrote your first bit of code. Okay, what does that mean? Well, I, I wouldn't worry about this right now. We won't get too much into, into specifics at this time. Just know that you're writing out a message to the console. Later, we're going to be breaking everything down so that when you come back to this, it's going to be clear as crystal. It's pretty awesome when that happens. And typically, I like to build my scripts after I save them. So I hit Command B, and this builds the scripts. What does that mean? It actually just compiles the script. It takes this script in English and compiles it down to a language that the computer can understand. Now that we've done this, we're going to return back to Unity. If you don't have your console open, definitely open it now. And here you can see if you have our cube and we have our Hello World script attached to it. Let's run our game. Okay, nothing really is happening here. <laughs> this is not very exciting. Well, here comes the exciting part. You can see this check marks next to the cube. This means that the cube is currently enabled into the game. Just uncheck this cube so that we're going to disable disable this cube. And look at that. We have our first message. 
Hello World. Congratulations, you entered the programming world with C Sharp. In the next video, we're going to be covering variables and what that exactly means. But for now, I want you to return back to this project and I want you to create another message, except I want you to make a message when you enable this cube. Like so, there should be another message that says, whatever you want, maybe goodbye world, for instance, we have a backwards cube. Here we have an on disable method. You should copy the same thing, except it's not on disable now, it's on enable. And then you can write your message. Once you've created your on enable message, Keep in mind, when you start your game, it's actually going to print out right away because the game automatically enables your objects. So you'll see your on enable message first printed, then you'll uncheck it to disable it, and then you'll get your disable message, and then when you check it to re-enable it again, you'll then get your enable message. Well, I want to thank you for watching this, and hopefully you've learned something. There's a lot more fun to come, so keep on coming back and as always feel free to like feel free to subscribe and if you have any messages just shoot them over to me or to the community as well thanks again and i'll see you next time